welcome to Kew. Kew used to be a suburb in its own right, up until it amalgamated in 1994 with Hawthorne in Canberra. John Hodgson established a pastoral run in 1840 on the east side of Yarra River, Studley Park. But it wasn't until the 1850s that Kew Junction began to be established. Thank you to the Kew Historical Society. I have this little booklet which will give us a tour around Kew, East Kew, Sudley Park, to show you some of the quite ornate buildings that were built at the time. Burundara means shady place. And as you will find whilst we're walking around Burundara, you'll notice that it is quite a leafy suburb. Anyway, I'm with Ruby and Peter is with us and we're off to do a walk around Kew. See you on the walk, guys. Standing at the Kew Junction at Raoul's little garden corner here, and behind me you can see the Kew Hotel, or as some would know it, the Clifton Hotel. And we're not quite sure what its future is going to be as there's a development happening in the place. But Kew was known for about nine hotels. They were all built during the 1850s and 60s and some of them underwent refurbishments and new facades in the 1930s, giving them an Art Deco finish. Some of the hotels of the area were the Q Hotel behind me, the Woodland Inn built in 1854, the Princess Hotel built in 1865, O'Shaughnessy's of Q Hotel, built in 1855. The Prospect Hill Hotel, 1858. Groundhound, built in 1873. The Princess Hotel, built in 1865, which is close to the Q Asylum. Some of these have been delicensed and demolished, and a few still survive today. Behind me is a cenotaph which was erected in 1925. It replaced the Queen's Victoria water fountain which was transferred to the Alexandra Gardens on Coffin Road. You can see the Kew Post Office that was built in 1888. No longer a post office, it now houses a pub, the Postmaster Hotel. So we have another hotel in Kew. And if you're looking for a good bite to eat, you can't go past a palmer and a pint. Check out this place. It's awesome.
1887, the only access to the Burundara Cemetery was via Bridge Road, Richmond, from Victoria Bridge. So this area commemorates when horse-drawn trams actually came up to this point. The bridge behind me was constructed in 1891. It formed part of the Outer Circle railway line. The line ceased in 1927 and by 1930 it was converted to traffic. Unfortunately the bridge started to become congested with heavy traffic and hence a new bridge was built alongside it and in 2018 the bridge was converted for pedestrians. Lunatic Asylum, constructed in 1864, opened in 1871, and ceased in 1988. Eventually became known as Wismir, but it was built in the Italian art style. Peter here of course. I, I'm standing in front of what we call the Studley Park Boathouse but it has a bit of a history behind it. It was actually built in 1863 by the Byrne family in fact uh, and, um, and it still remains today as a public boathouse. They originally named it Riversdale but somehow over the years it became the Studley Park Boathouse. It is the oldest boathouse on the Yarra. I think that is only competing with the Fairfield Boathouse, really. So it's a little bit older than the Fairfield Boathouse. Hey, so come down here one day. It's very typical of Melbourne to hire one of these little boats and have a little canoe on the Yarra, and you feel very much part of Melbourne. Come and enjoy. Hey, I'm with Ruby here, and I'm sitting in front of this cairn on the Yarra River. Now, this cairn marks two events. One was in 1803, when some surveyor bloke by the name of Charles Grimes from the colony of New South Wales surveyed this district. That's probably all he did. And then a couple of years later, in around 1836, we had John Gardner bringing a few livestock nearby. So there we go, a little bit of history to this particular area. Behind me is Villa Alba, which was built in 1882, one of the many mansions that are in queue. 
there were many, many mansions built in this area. It was a very affluent area. They were big acre lots with mansions. Many of them gave way in time and were pulled down and made into small allotments for apartments and houses. It's a shame that we've lost a lot of the mansions, but some still remain, especially along Studley Road up on the hill. We get to see Raheen and Studley House, and there's a few other mansions which we'll show you along the way. But it was a very affluent area in its time. But here, Jojo, affluent. Affluent. You're right. They, these mansions just littered the hilltops of Kew. Absolutely. Bye, Jojo. Well, this is Peter here in front of Sacred Heart Church and the Sacred Heart School Hall. Wow, is there an awful lot of cellar history that took place on this particular site? And my grandparents lived across the road in Mary Street. So my parents were actually married here in 1956, but the church itself goes back to 1918. Some very famous people actually also attended this particular church. Interestingly enough, the school hall was actually built in 1900, so they may have used the school hall for a number of years whilst the church itself was under construction. I'm kneeling down in front of a house that was built in 1886 for Dr. William Walsh. The house was eventually bought by the RSL as we know it today. And it's standing still mighty proud, looking really good. Well, we've come to the end of our walk around Kew. We have actually split the walk up in several sections because it was quite a bit of a distance to walk through. But um, great notes from the Kew Library or the Historical Society in Kew and worthwhile during the walk. It encompasses some wonderful buildings we've seen along the way. and. That comes to an end for us and um, we should look forward to uh, another adventure with you guys. Okay, bye for now. <laughs>